If you're young and living at home, but you wanna get into property investing, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Tony Doyle from Your First Four Houses, and my channel is all about helping you achieve financial security through property. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon so that you don't miss out on any of the free content that I give you each and every week. So, I'm outside by the way, because it's frankly just too nice to be filming inside. <laughs> now, I had a great question come in from Samuel Johnson. He asked me, do you have any advice for someone who's looking to move out of a parent's house, but who also wants to invest in property? I'm 21 and saving for a house deposit that I can build equity in over a period of a few years. Now, Samuel, that is a fantastic question and I've given this a lot of thought and I'm gonna give you nine tips that I think that may well help you. So the very first one is you are 21 years old, which is a wonderful age to be, I hasten to add. But one of the challenges that you may well have is getting mortgages at all at this age with the, the level of experience that you have, which by the sounds of things is, is not much, if any, at all. So one of your first tasks is to go and speak to a competent mortgage broker, someone with access to the whole of the market. You're gonna sit down with this individual and you're gonna lay out what you're doing, what your plans are, what your income is, and you're gonna find out, can you actually get a mortgage at all? If you can't, it 100% is not the end of the world. There are other things that you can do to invest in property without needing to get a mortgage, but you wanna get this one tied down first of all. Next, you need to learn how to calculate return on investment. Now, I did a great little video on that. You want to check that one out, but you need to get good at this. And I would personally suggest you go and grab a few properties off of right move and calculate what the return on investment is. The sooner you get good at calculating, calculating return on investment, the sooner you're going to be able to nail down deals and know that they are indeed a really good deal. So tip number three, could you do a joint venture with family or friends? Now, I know this may not be something that you've initially thought of, but if you are unmortgageable, and maybe if you have limited or no funds to actually invest, you could connect with family, friends, obviously parents being the obvious one, and maybe have a chat to them, see if they're willing to support you in starting off your property investment journey. Don't forget, so many people have got money in the bank right now, earning a pitiful return. And if you can demonstrate that you're competent and you obviously have to put deals together that are solid deals, and again, I do appreciate that in the early days that may be a little bit challenging, but if you can do this and give somebody a really good rate of return on the money that they've got in the bank, you're doing them a favor as well as doing yourself a favor. Next, go and see 10 properties this week. And I mean walk through the doors of 10 properties. Now I know that if you're maybe just starting out and you're maybe not thinking that you've got a lot of funds available or, or you're not really in a position to do this, maybe that may be a little bit challenging. And you certainly don't wanna wear one estate agent down. Believe me, you don't wanna do that. But going out to see properties, like maybe 10 in a week, gives you a really solid understanding of what these properties are worth. And you may well come across a real diamond of a deal. And as soon as you do find a really good deal, be assured there are people around you who will be willing to invest in that property and maybe do some kind of a joint venture deal with you. Look for places where you can add real tangible value. Now I always emphasize the words real tangible value because I don't really feel that just doing a light makeover, a bit of decorating is really gonna add any real tangible value. But there are ways that you can add real tangible value to a property. You need to go and look for those. Look for problem properties. Now, if you can go out of your way to find properties that have got problems, it might be that they're unmortgageable in some way, it might be you find a flat with a really short lease, for example, these are problem properties and, and these sellers are gonna have difficulty selling these places on. It therefore gives you an opportunity to maybe go in, find a way to resolve their problem, maybe add a little bit of value in the process and get yourself a really awesome deal. Go out there, start looking for these places with problems. Could you turn a one bedroom flat into a two bedroom flat? 
Now, if you're just starting out, I'm, I'm imagining that money or budget is limited. You can go and buy a one bedroom flat, but rather than doing what everybody else does, just going out and buying a one bedroom flat, buy a bigger one bedroom flat. Maybe where there's a big social area and you've got a separate kitchen or big lounge area, I mean, you've got a separate kitchen. And maybe what you do is you take the kitchen out and you move the kitchen into the lounge area and turn the kitchen space into a second bedroom. In doing that, you can instantly add extra value. Could you buy somewhere bigger and rent out the rooms? So here I'm really suggesting that maybe you buy say a three or four bedroom house and you yourself move into one of the rooms. <laughs> I'd suggest making sure it's the best room. It's up to you though, of course. And you rent out the other rooms. And in this way, you give yourself a little bit of an income, but perhaps more importantly, the rental income that's coming in from these properties enables you to live in this house completely for free. It's a great way to get started and it's the way that a lot of investors initially get their first property. And lastly, I need you to document everything. So what do I mean by this? Well, I've mentioned this before, I know in videos, but I think this is really important. When you do your first deal, regardless of what it is or what you're doing with it, you need to go out of your way to document everything that you're doing. So I'm talking about before and after photographs. I'm talking about before and after floor plans, assuming you're changing anything. I'm talking about video, and by that I mean maybe walkthroughs of what you're doing, but more importantly, you need to get on camera, do what I'm doing. I'm sure you'll do a better job of it than I do, but you need to do this because at some point, maybe it's the next deal or the deal after that, you're gonna have an investor who's gonna to say to you, yeah, okay, I'm interested, but what have you done before? What can you show me? What have you done before? And in putting this content together now, you're gonna be able to give them some video footage of maybe some walkthroughs or, or challenges that you've had when you did this deal. But you can give them a PDF that sort of gives them a bit of an insight into this deal and how the numbers stacked and so on. And, and often this is the thing that will convince people to maybe joint venture with you. I really hope you found that helpful. Whilst you're here, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And you might also want to download this 50 point checklist, which gives you everything that you need to do before buying that first investment property. You just go down the lift and just tick the, the items off as you go down. My name's Tony Dore from your first four houses. I hope you found this one helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.